Welcome to the Splash Assess Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Quinley. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live After Show. And on the September 11th episode of JLL, I really don't like saying the date with such enthusiasm. It's a very sad date. R.I.P. But also, um, I feel bad because I know other people who it's like their birthday today and they have other celebratory things, anniversaries, whatever. So it sucks when something tragic happens. I mean, obviously it sucks more for the tragedy and all that, but it for everyone who that date, it still means something the complete opposite for them. Or now they are also sad and you know, you know, you get it. All right. So RIP to all those affected by everything in life and moving on to the JLL episode today we had Tracy Tudor we had Josh Flagg and we had Sha Nate Douglas bitch 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 Okay, so um, we start off by learning a million dollar listing Los Angeles production secret, which was bound to happen. I mean, we have two out of the three stars of the show on in the studio. So yeah, something's gonna slip out. Uh, well, something is definitely gonna slip out. At least it was just a secret and it wasn't something that should be secret in your pants. Okay, why am I starting like this? What is wrong with me? So many things. All right, so Josh Flagg lets us know that sometimes they're still filming the season when the season that they're filming premieres because they have to do real deals. So yeah, it takes up to 10 months per season sometimes. And Tracy Tudor is telling us, oh, so that's a secret that production wouldn't be that mad gets out, you know, like, oh my God. Oh no. Everybody found out that our show is real. Uh Oh, call the press which they will, and somehow the press will be like, Josh Flagg slams production company. You know, they all, we love a twist. Um, so yeah, Tracy Tudor says how sometimes she's filming like hours and hours. Every She just got back from a huge day of filming. Ugh. Can you imagine Tracy Tudor at BravoCon running into a Winter House cast member? <laughs> Because there are some people who are only on the show Winter House, which films for two weeks in Vermont. It when it's not, it barely even snows there anymore. Thank you, global warming. Oh, wait, that's not real. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so, but it is, it is. Don't come after me, Greta Thornburg. Um, so yeah, I'm just saying, like, so if if Bravo fans are just as excited to see, say, Jason from Winter House, because he's so fucking adorable, who wouldn't be excited to see him? Are you joking me? And then Tracy sitting next to she runs into Jason and she's like, oh my God, we just, they have, that would be a great couple, Tracy and Jason. <gasps> okay, let's actually make this happen. But it, Tracy won't want to after this little scenario plays out. Okay, so Tracy is like, oh my God, Jason's such a hottie, goes over over there starts chatting with him she's like oh my gosh we just wrapped up 10 months of filming for million dollar listing like i cannot wait for my two months off until we start it all back over again and jason's like oh nice nice yeah i mean i just film for two weeks a year but man those those two weeks are real exhausting on my liver so totally get how you feel trace totally understand you like what but it, they talk about housewives and how housewives get mad at each other internally because like some don't show up to some events and they get to take, they don't have to go on the cast trip and they get to take time to themselves instead of showing their entire life on camera like they did when they signed a deal with the devil. 
No, I'm kidding, huh? I love you, Bravo. But yeah, it's just crazy. Production can be so different on these Bravo shows, and some can take 10 months to film, and some take two weeks. You ask me, which show would I rather be on? Well, all right, let's, we're going to Vermont. We're going to Vermont, baby. I learned how to take fake shots back in college, so don't tempt me with a good time. And by the way, by learning how to take fake shots, I mean, you actually, you just swallow. You just swallow. Always swallow, ladies. Never forget. No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do whatever you want. All right. So Josh Flagg is currently living in a rental house right now or a hotel. I don't Who knows? Probably hotel. But either way, he bought a house in Beverly Hills over a year ago. Sight unseen. What the fuck? Sight unseen. Never stepped one foot into the house. Never even got one little piggy toe across that line, across that threshold. You're like, yeah, thank you, Amy, for defining what sight unseen means for us. We get it. But yeah, like, it's just so fascinating that a realtor made that decision because we know that all good realtors recommend to buy your houses unseen. <laughs> Actually, they should. They That would be beneficial because then they don't have to deal with the contingencies and home inspections and yada, yada, yada. Ew, have you seen that commercial where they're like, yada, yada, yada. I can't see commercial. Everything just gets stuck in your head. I've been brainwashed by commercialism. Okay, so as part of Josh's deal in buying the house, the only contingency he did have, he doesn't care about inspections and seeing how good the pipes are and all that shit. No, he just has an old lady living there for a year until she's ready to move out. Okay, so I guess she was the original homeowner. Um, And then we find out the real reason why she wants some time to spend packing up. Because she's literally packing everything that she can get her paws on. Oh my god. Josh basically gave this lady a year to rip the house down to the studs. To the studs. She must have found some studs to help rip it down to the studs. Because I don't see how an elderly woman is getting all this hardwood floors up and whatever. But basically, she just left what looks like a set. It just looks like a TV set that's empty and ready for a new sitcom to move in. But at the same time, so Tracy is telling us, telling us all about Josh's house. And she's like, there's no walls. There's no nothing. Blah, blah, blah. But then they're also like, oh, yeah. And this lady was a hoarder, too. She left so much shit behind. And I'm like, all right, well, which one is it? Did she take everything in sight, including the windowsills? Did she take the stairs out with her? Like, did she take the every railing she could find? I don't know. But... We know that there will be plenty of railing going on in that house once Josh moves in. (laughs) But um, bump. Okay, so Jeff said how he always finds it shocking that people can leave houses in such disarray when they're moving out. Like, he always leaves his homes impeccably clean, obviously, as if we'd expect anything less from Mr. OCD Lewis himself. But yeah, leave it how you found it. Isn't that what they say about relationships or something? Lose them how you got them. You lose your house the same way you get a new one. So always keep it clean, people. Always keep it clean. And get a bidet. That's healthy for any relationship. Okay, so, yeah, Jeff is just saying, like, ew, people are so gross and messy and dirty. Ew. Uh, Yeah, Jeff, you should have seen when I was searching back in the day for an apartment in Boston. Holy fucking shit. I don't know how it is in any other city. I've looked at plenty of other cities, actually. And I don't know. I'm sure it's bad now in other places. But, The apartments on Boston, any Boston listing, they were so disgusting. Mind you, mind you, they were 20,000% increase on what you should ever pay for any apartment anywhere ever. But also it was like dirty dishes stacked up in the stink. Wait, I just said stink. (laughs) What a Freudian slip. Because it looked like it stunk. It just looked like the kitchen stunk from the picture. It looked like the whole place stunk. And it probably did. But yeah, they were stacked in the sink and they stinked, I'm sure. And they were clothes everywhere. Clothes on the couch, on the bedroom, hanging on the lamps. It was like, 
are there savages that live there? Like, what the fuck is happening? To the point where I would respond back to, and real estate agents would be posting these listings. And I, of course I would, my petty ass fingers typing away a tier one email. And I would be like, um, aren't you embarrassed? Talking about Sebastian Maniscalco, aren't you embarrassed? Like, how can you be making me try to pay $2,000 for a studio apartment covered in shit. It's covered in human shit. And he was like, yeah, take it or leave it, bitch. Like, what else are you going to find? And I was like, you're right. You're right. Nothing. Like, they all look like this. It's disgusting. So, yeah, Jeff, I agree. Like, even if you can't afford a cleaning service, you know, at least a little Lysol. It never, karma always comes back. All right, people? So Jeff is also renovating his house, just like Josh, but Jeff's is going to take forever, of course. He has to get everything approved through official historian boards or something. I don't know. But he says that they won't be moving into the house for like at least another year. Woof. But Sparkles the Clown, she's starting her mermaid mural in Monroe's room next month. Wait, that sounds like a tongue twister if I've ever heard it. Monroe's Mermaid Mural. Say that 10 times. Mer- Monroe's Mermaid Mural. Mon- they should play that game in the morning with Monroe. She, <laughs> she would love it. I can't do it. You try. Um, okay, so Tracy made an excellent point by asking, like, I thought Monroe was over mermaids and into dolls or something. Whatever she said. And Jeff was like, no, no, no. She's over dolls and into butterflies and mermaids now. But great question to bring up because wouldn't by next summer, won't she not be into either? She won't be into either. She won't care about dolls, butterflies, or mermaids. Like, how can Jeff expect Monroe to still be into the same mural that's being painted in October for when she moves in next year? Like, it's all kids are like cat years. They move in cat years, you know? They grow, especially when they're younger, they grow seven times the rate in one year. So as an adult does, we're already, we're good. We can move a little bit slower so yeah they they, she's not gonna want it i'm sorry i'm just i'm so confused about this timeline like jeff how are how are you not thinking this through to me the mural should be one of the last steps not the first like give it time to simmer give it time to sit by next spring it's gonna be a huge new movie out or a huge new something there's always something new we know this Um, yeah, but what do I know? What do I, what do I know? Nothing. I do know that Tracy Tudor, she might be getting a visit from the Popo today. (laughs) And it's not because she stole a car in the Hamptons accidentally. No, 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 no. This is for something else. So Tracy had an issue with her daughter a few weeks ago and let us know that her daughter got fake IDs. And they were all like, what do you mean? Like, where do you get these IDs? And Tracy was like, I don't know. You just actually, no, that's not true. Right away, Josh Flagg named a street. He was instantly (laughs) like, he's like, like, oh, Pumpernickel Lane. And we were like, what? And he's like, I don't I mean, that's where I used to do business. That's where I used to sell the fake IDs that I made for kids back in the day. <laughs> Josh Flagg is one of the kids that would be making the IDs and selling them and being like, look at all these losers fucking buying fake IDs, go get shit face at the club. And all those kids are like, oh my God, look at this loser sitting in his room making us fake IDs. But then Josh is really just like making stacks, stacks, stacks of money, bitch. I'd be one of the girls in the club with a fake ID. Yeah, okay. Shocker, shocker. But so Tracy lets everybody know on live air that they got 10 IDs shipped to them in the mail. Like two for each kid in case they lose them. You always need backups. All right, this is the part where the police questioning might come in. I don't know. Maybe Los Angeles police have bigger fish to fry. I don't know what you guys are eating over there. All right, I don't know what you have time for. Time for cooking. But... I'm just saying that when they find out your fake IDs, yeah, they're, they're, they might want to know what's go. You might have caused a scandal, but there's been plenty worse that have happened on JLL. Let's just say that. So I'm sure she'll be fine. 
Um, yeah, so Tracy's daughter, Juliet, rolled up an hour and a half late for curfew. She was stumbling around after a couple of beers, as Tracy put it. I just love that phrase. People, that's that's her protect. That's where her protective mama bear instinct came in. She was like, don't let the people know that she was 12 tequila shots deep. Like, what do you mean a couple of beers? Yeah, okay. Juliet's at the club sipping Corona light. Uh-huh. Yeah, all right. Not vodka so soda. Mm -hmm. So she learned from her mama. She knows what tastes good. So sure. After a couple beers, Juliet and three friends, they come home and Juliet was getting sassy, a little too sassy towards Tracy. When I think Tracy was just being a great mom and being like, uh, do your parents know where you're at? And they're like, yeah. And she's like, cool. Tell them to pick you up. I don't care. It's 2 a.m. Like, my daughter broke curfew. Y'all have to go home. If I was a parent, I'd be annoyed as fuck to have to wake up. But I would respect. I would rather be awake and annoyed. I would respect Tracy so much as a mom. Like, yes, okay, stick with your rules. Even though now Juliet's being rewarded with an even later curfew. <laughs> So I don't really know how that all works out, but sure. Oh, again, whatever people want to do, but okay. So Tracy was like, look, I would have let it go until the morning at the very least. They could, the girls could have slept over. Their parents could have had a peaceful night's rest, but hopefully they weren't taking the CBD gummies. See, that's the thing. Jeff right now, he can get away with taking the THC gummies that he loves, but especially for the nights when he accidentally doubles the dosage or he purposefully doubles Stu's dosage so that Stu will just pass the fuck out and not complain about Jeff snoring. No, but I'm just saying like eventually it reaches a point where you can't do that as a parent. Like you have to go to bed somewhat sober because what if you were the parent that Tracy called and now you have to go pick up your kid and you're like, Tracy, I get that your daughter broke curfew, but like, I'm so fucked up. Like we had, we thought we were having a night without the kids. We took some weed gummies ate some of Mushroom Meggy shrooms. And yeah, we're two bottles of wine deep at this point. Like I can't get, I can't get in a car. I don't want to send her in an Uber. At t no, she's just have her sleep over in the downstairs lair, you know, like can't, that's what Tracy should have done. Like had the girls all get to sleep over downstairs in the basement or something. And like Juliet has to sleep on Tracy's floor. So I don't know. I, I, this is why I'm not a parent <laughs> yet. I still haven't decided. All right, so, but about the most important thing about this, after I just ranted for 10 minutes, no, but Jeff was like, yeah, you couldn't let it go, though, because, oh, my God, did anybody just hear my cat's meow? Finnegan, that he does that, and it sounds like he's crying. He's like, meow, like you would never play with me. We've been playing all fucking day, my little angel. Let me work. Let me work, work, let me work. Hi, cutie. All right. So Tracy was like, yeah, but Juliet wasn't apologetic. And Jeff was like, yeah, she was just a little bitchy. And Tracy was like, yeah, she was being a little bitchy. But more than that, she was being a little cunty. And Josh Flagg, wicked quick. He was like, oh, so you can use that word. You can use that word at this point. You guys, this, and, and then we just blew right over it. Do you remember their feud? Their feud on the last season of Million Dollar Listing? That was, they got into a huge fight about their friendship because I'm pretty sure it was Juliet that Josh on the phone, he called her a cunt. And then now Tracy's on live air on Jeff's show a year later calling that same daughter a cunt. And I get it. It's like, yeah, I can call my daughter a cunt, but my best friend can't call my daughter a cunt. But I mean, if you're going to call your da your daughter a cunt, then I think your best friend should be able to call your daughter a cunt. You know, like a cunt's a cunt. I'm not saying that she is a cunt. I don't even know her. I love you, Julia. I love you. <laughs> How did I get roped into this? All right, back and away. So Jeff and Co. went to Santana. Santana, are you for real? Are you forget about Horace? Forget about it.
<laughs> Sometimes I just like to test if I can actually break a mirror with my voice. <laughs> Is that just an urban myth? I want to see if they've ever done a Mythbusters episode about that. Because, yeah, I feel like I could definitely break some shit with whatever vocal cords I was blessed with. So... Jeff um, and his friends, they went to a restaurant called Santana. And if you didn't get that from that whole spiel, and there were five people there. But once they sat down, it immediately branched into three conversations. And Jeff, Jeff, of course, had to get the entire table's attention to say that he prefers one conversation. So all eyes on him. No, I get Jeff's point. Like, obviously they all wanted to, yeah, he wants to talk to everybody, but like he waited five minutes before demanding that they all can only speak at once. Like whoever has the golden fork can talk. I don't know, but sometimes you just got to give it a second to like, everybody's just first meeting each other up for the first time. haven't seen each other for a while. They're just bipping and bopping around, you know, like bippity boppity boop. And so like give it until the appetizers to then demand one, you know, or even the main course. All right. Let the main course equals one main conversation. All right, there we go. So, But also, like, Jeff prefers one conversation, but what if three out of the five people there, they prefer having any conversation they want? Like, so the majority rules to have multiple combos, but nobody spoke up about it because they already saw the twinkle in Jeff's eye that he was almost ready to glitch out. Like, everybody just wants everybody to have fun. Well... The other four people just wanted Jeff to have fun. So they were like, sure, your honor, we'll all listen to you. Um, But Jeff was like, look, it was all fine. We all had a great time and had one conversation. And Shane was like, yeah, because everyone was fucking scared. We were all too scared. And he was there so he would know. So then it moves on to Jeff hating when people can't read the room whilst telling stories. I mean, they say that you project. The things you don't like are things that you yourself do. I don't know. That's just what Dr. Duana would probably say. So Jeff explains that one girl at the dinner table started telling a story and Jeff (laughs) basically interrupts to be like, all right, this story's taking so long. Someone better fucking die to make it worth our time or else I'm going to be pissed. And no one died. So Jeff was pissed. Uh, They ended up being a heroin addict, but it wasn't worth it. The payoff was not (laughs) the payoff was not worth their invested attention. The irony of it all, the irony of it all, of Jeff wanting one conversation, and then they have one conversation, and then he hates that one conversation. Oh my fucking God. Like, yeah, now he's bored and wants to branch off and have a new convo. Well, that's the point of having multiple conversations going at the table. Like, if someone's boring you, and they only reveal their estranged parent is a lame heroin addict and didn't die a treacherous death then you can simply turn your head to the right and find some new entertainment, all right? It's an easy turnover, but instead, now you have to rush this girl out of the story, scare her even more, and yeah, now nobody wants to go out with the dictator of the evening, like the dick, the dinner-tator, the dick, dick, just the dick, the dick at dinner. <laughs> Everybody wants to get dick after dinner. They don't want to eat dinner with a dick. You get what I'm saying, Jeff? Love ya, but we got some work to do. We all do, all right? I'm not one to judge. I'll look in the mirror that I'm trying to break with my voice. (laughs) All right, so also, Josh Flagg says that he was the person not reading the room a few days ago when he told the story about how he spread part of his grandma Edith's ashes in the Four Seasons Maui Hotel pool? What the fuck, you guys? I thought Jeff peeing in the pool was bad. I never even considered that you'd have to worry about a dead grandma floating by. What the fuck? A dead grandma getting all up in my cooch? That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. No. Like his grandma was getting all up inside of people. Any orifice that they dipped into that ash-soaked pool on that fateful day. Oh my. They probably thought it was volcano ashes. They didn't know it was fucking Edith from Los Angeles, California floating by. Oh my gosh, now and more things to worry about. I never even considered 
ashes in a pool, but welcome to Jeff Lewis Live, where we always learn something new. So somebody else called in to let Tracy know that their daughter was misbehaving at one point and nothing they were doing worked. So eventually her dad threw her shoes into the woods. And that's what taught the daughter the lesson. Because the shoes that her parents bought for them, then her parents threw them in the woods. So then the daughter had her parents buy her new shoes. And then that was the lesson. She got a new pair of new shoes out of it. I don't know. I was a little confused on that one. But I was also a little distracted because I was watching this video of an orangutan. (laughs) Of course. And I should talk about being distracted. Multiple conversations. I'm having multiple conversations in my own head at every single moment. So an orangutan in an Australian zoo, it picked up a possum, a stray possum that got into the exhibit and the orangutan was like up on this platform and it picks up the raccoon and just chucks it wicked far. And like the possum's just flying in the air like a meatball in the sky. It's finally raining meatballs, except it's splattering raccoon guts, RIP. Um, And all I could think about is how many football quarterbacks were so jealous of the arm on that chimp watching that video they're probably like damn did you see the spin that raccoon had what the fuck so then i was thinking are there rules that only humans can play in the nfl and if so is that discrimination against other species like what if i want to i i'm just getting at the fact that i want to represent this orangutan and be its sports agent and try to get a deal with the nfl after seeing its amazing raccoon toss (laughs) So, um, yeah, I'm going to go look into that. And you guys just have the best fucking day ever. We will be back tomorrow for another recap. Hopefully by then I'll have the orangutan sign the motherfucking deal. But either way, we'll be back. I love you guys so much. Bye. Splash, 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 splash.